So what would you do when the trade ideas trade of the week gaps up on Monday, way above the trigger price that was mentioned in the email? Well, I'm going to show you because this is a very good lesson in what to do. This week, Sentinel-1 S was the trade of the week. And I believe the trigger point was just above this high down here. Let me accentuate that for you. Right there, this is the high on Friday. And uh, that was our trigger point. There was the close on Friday. So what happened is, for whatever reason, news, volume, it doesn't matter. The stock actually opened way up here above 27, 20, almost $28. No way would we ever suggest that you chase that type of opening. That type of opening is really a sucker's play because it tests your patience. The people that want it in might jump up and grab it. But then as you can see, they're really just setting themselves up for you know three or four days of, of grinding back and forth. But what I wanted to do, and I did in my own personal account, was what I always do on a gap up play like this. I wait for the moving averages to catch up. Now, the price can either consolidate uh, in time, meaning it just goes sideways, or the price can consolidate by pulling backwards to a lower price. And that's what we got in this case. And most importantly, I just want to zoom in a little. OK, so having zoomed in on the daily chart, I want to highlight a couple of key indexes. I want to highlight a couple. So zooming in here on the daily chart, I want to highlight a couple of moving averages. This is my go-to moving average. It's the 10 simple moving average. It takes 10 candles and calculates them and averages them out and plots them as a line. The red one is kind of flat, but turning back up, this is a 20-day simple moving average. And these two averages together on a daily chart give me a lot of times all the information I really need. And it took one, two, three, four days. Today is Thursday. The gap up was on Monday. But today it pulled back and it touched the 10 simple moving average. Now, it's important for me to see an actual touch. Why is that important? Well, if you didn't realize that this market is run by algorithms and algorithms need key inputs, key targets, um, and usually moving averages, in my opinion, I've noticed a pretty good correlation between areas of reversal and moving averages. So we've been talking about the daily chart here. I want to move over to the 15 minute chart because this is really my favorite time frame of all. Even though I'm a swing trader and I'm looking at daily candles for confirmation of the bigger picture, if I want to zoom in to what's really going on, I have some other key indicators I can look at. Primarily this blue line here, it's essentially a five day moving average, but we're looking at it through the, uh, the lens of a 15 minute chart. So what it is, and anybody can do this with your own chart, it doesn't matter what program you have. If you go to indicators and you apply a simple moving average, SMA, if you add 130 periods, that actually divides perfectly into five days of 15 minute candles and gives you a smoothed out five day moving average. So with that said, pay attention to the uh, price action here on Friday. It pulled back and closed right at the five day moving average. And then we had our enormous gap up, which again, we do not want to chase. You want to just keep this on your watch list. What I like to do is set a price alert. I probably set an alert down here on this level. Um, I missed it, and I'm going to tell you why. This is a touch here of the five-day moving average, but it wasn't touching on the daily. So once it touched on the daily, I shifted my perspective over to the 15-minute, uh, the and I could see that it did break down midday. And I told myself, if this thing gets back above and handily closes a couple candles above and recaptures and reclaims this uh, moving average, that's going to be my entry for the trade of the week. Even though the idea was Monday, it took until Thursday until the jump rope really came around and settled into an area of which I was uh, comfortable. Now, where do we go from here? Uh, I will note that it's nice to see the 10 period moving average on my 15 minute chart. Okay, just like the daily, the 10 average on a 15 minute chart gives me an indication of short term momentum. 
And as long as the stock's trading above that line, and more importantly, it comes back and tests that level and pops back up, that gives me confirmation that I want to be in this trade overnight. And what I'm hoping this thing does is give me my perfect day and a half trade. Ideally, the next day will be a nice green candle. We'll see what happens. And then if that's the case, I ride it one more day, and the following day, I start becoming a seller at higher prices. And so that gives me the ability to buy low and then have what the buyers want as they chase the stock up into my sell orders. And that's a simple day and a half swing trade. That's my, my main bread and butter swing trade. Only using a few moving averages, the 10, the 20, 50, and then the 10 and the five day moving average on the 15 minute chart. I hope that helps. That's how I like to do it. There's no one right way, but if you find your way, good on you.